Good morning, Calvary family. We're glad that you're with us today as we worship the Lord. We'd like to uh, welcome you this morning. Uh, today outside, if you've looked out the window, it is beautiful out. We have a beautiful sunny day. It's supposed to get up to 46 today, which is uh, awesome. We've been waiting for this weather for a long time. I know that uh, myself, just sitting out in the evenings now, it's not uncommon to see uh, swans and geese flying by and eagles circling around the sky and at the bird feeder there's a lot of songbirds coming back so hopefully uh, you're able to get outside a little bit and enjoy some of this uh, nicer warmer weather. Uh, as we look at our week ahead we really want to call attention to once again our website which is calvarychurchwalker.org and we'd like you to become as familiar with that as you can. We have several different cards on there that are helpful I think for you, and they've been helpful, I know, for our family, uh, just as we look at the COVID-19 and just some of our health responses as a church, um, our health ministries page, as far as other cards that have to do with uh, weddings, funerals, food shelf, uh, just anything that's kind of uh, part of our Calvary family um, at uh, website will give you some uh, good basic information as far as that's concerned i also like to uh, call your attention to our Facebook site as well. That is uh, really valuable as far as uh, getting not only devotions, which we have video devotions available. We have uh, Calvary Kids uh, ministry videos that uh, periodically uh, go up there as well. We uh, also are uh, um, um, opening that format up uh, later this week. On the 2nd, April 2nd, we're having a Calvary uh, Town Hall meeting. And you are going to have the opportunity early in the week here uh, to submit questions. And then that event, Thursday night, uh, April 2nd at 7 o'clock, uh, we will have uh, some live answers to those questions. It'll probably be about an hour long or so. So if you'd like to uh, tune into that um, with Facebook, uh, we want to encourage you to do that. There'll be some information coming out tomorrow as far as um, some ways that you can submit questions for that town hall meeting. So we want to make sure that uh, you're checking your email or possibly Facebook um, and then getting those questions back into us um, early in the week. Then uh, coming up uh, also, uh, um, something else we have available for you if you're interested in a daily text devotion, um, you could let the office know and we will uh, submit that to you on a daily basis. It's just a short one minute devotion if you're interested in that sort of thing. So uh, our call to worship this morning well, comes actually out of uh, the Old Testament, the book of Job. <clears throat> and I'm reading in the 19th chapter. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he will stand upon the earth at last. And after my body has decayed, yet in my body I will see God. I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. Now, would you please stand as we uh, worship the Lord together? song we could ever sing and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Show me who you are 
a name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you trust you, Lord, with every aspect of our lives. Lord, in the good, in the bad, in the mountaintops, in the valleys, Lord, we thank you that you are a God who is in control. And Father, we thank you this morning that our identity and who we are is not based on our merit, what we bring to the table, what we can accomplish, Lord, but it is who you say we are, and that is loved by you. So Heavenly Father, we lift up this next song to you. We praise you and we worship you, and we ask this, Father, in your name. Amen.
God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the dark.
found Oh may I then in Him be found And trust in His righteousness alone And for the stand before the throne Well, before we go to, into our prayer for our offering today, we'd like to uh, remind you that these are great days and opportunity days for our church as, as uh, a body to uh, reach out to our neighbors and to uh, tell people about the hope that is within us. And the church continues to have financial needs. I know that we all are feeling some of the pressures of what's going on right now financially. We want to be uh, sensitive to that, and yet if you are able to give even a small amount during this time, uh, we would certainly appreciate that, and that helps us to continue to uh, reach out not only to you, but to our community uh, with the good news and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So if you're able to do that, calvarychurchwalker.org is a great way to give online, although you can send uh, uh, checks in the mail as well. So if you're able, um, we would encourage you uh, to continue to uh, support the ministry here. Would you join me for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And it is beautiful outside, and we are so grateful for the sunshine. Um, this has been um, a long winter, and we are at a season now where um, winter is starting to lose to spring. Uh, today we have a gorgeous day outside, and I pray that people would have the opportunity to uh, open up their windows today, let some fresh air uh, flow through their households. And Lord, I pray for um, us as a church family. Uh, Lord, these are challenging days. They're challenging for us um, being um, at home in the sense of, of not having the regular uh, freedom of just moving here and there that we normally would have. It's challenging for us financially in many cases. Uh, many of our families are dealing with um, financial stresses um, due to this uh, coronavirus and uh, just the shutdown of many of our businesses and regular ways of life. Lord, I pray that uh, as we um, use the picture of just your, uh, uh, just the fresh air um, of today um, blowing through our homes. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would blow through uh, each of our hearts um, this morning. May we feel um, the freshness of your presence. May we feel uh, your love. May we feel that you are with us in your provision. Lord, may we feel your uh, joy and may we feel your sense of peace. Um, these are challenging times, and yet you are our rock. Uh, you have promised never to leave us or forsake us. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So our hope today is in you. Um, we pray for our leaders. We pray for those who are making important decisions for our country. But ultimately, Jesus, our hope is in you today. And we are thankful that you haven't gone anywhere and that you're with us, and you will help us get through these challenging times. So as we continue our time of, of worship in um, giving um, back to you uh, offerings, but also, Lord, as, as uh, we sing and as uh, Mark brings forth your good word, we pray that you would prepare our hearts for what you have for each of us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple, a couple weeks ago, we had a devo, devotional on Isaiah 41.10 about do not fear. And this morning, our Calvary kids are going to lead us in the singing of Isaiah 41.10, do not fear, for God is with you. I 
am with you, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. Isaiah 41 10. Well, good morning, Calvary family and friends. Thanks for tuning in today. We're glad you can join us for worship. And how about those kids? Man, can they sing or what? And I sure hope you adults were singing along with them. Well, this morning, we're coming into John's Gospel, chapter 11. If you have a Bible, I invite you to open it up and read along today. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And uh, the last couple weeks, as you already know, life has changed faster than we would have imagined. We've all seen how fast the stock market can come down, how fast unemployment can come up, and more importantly, how fast a virus can spread and threaten the people that we love. So life has changed very fast. But what I want you to know is that the God who knows all things knew that we would be here And he's got us more prepared for this than what we might imagine. I know that at home or at work, things may have really changed in your life. But realize that the God who loves you is here with us. And that doesn't matter whether you're cooped up at home today, in quarantine in an assisted living center, or whether you're on a frontline health care provider. God is with us and God is for us. So today in John's Gospel, we have this amazing truth that God in Jesus Christ showed up. The creator of the universe became a human being so that we could see what God is like in flesh and blood. In Jesus, the light of God's goodness is shining into the world's darkness. So when we hear Jesus speak, we hear the word of God. And when we see what Jesus does, we see God in action. And when we get to know the heart of Jesus, we get to know the heart of the Father. So if you're not familiar with John's gospel, can I encourage you to maybe read it before Easter? Before you start, Google the Bible Project, the Gospel of John, and it'll give you a simple visual introduction to John that's kind of like getting a map before you go hiking. It'll tell you what John's themes are and what to expect. So today in chapter 11, we come to really a high point in the book because Jesus has been demonstrating who he is by his miracles and also by these I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Well, today we come to the one that is maybe the greatest of all those promises. I am the resurrection and the life. So I'm going to be reading in chapter 11. And if you've got a Bible open, I want to invite you to read along with me. It says, A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. And this is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about this, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. 
So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of the world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go to him now. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to worship you this day. Uh, We're so glad that you love us and that you've shown us the full measure of your love in your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we just confess that you are Lord, you're our king, you're a good shepherd, and today we're depending on you to lead us. And Holy Spirit, we're so glad you're here with us today. Geographically, we're scattered all over the state and across the country. Uh, Many of us are cooped up at home and feel very alone today. But Lord, would you remind us that our unity is not just a physical unity of being under the same roof, but it's a unity in your spirit, that your life flows through us and we are connected today as a body of Christ. We just ask that your word will speak to us and that you'd give us a clear mind and a strong heart to live for you in these days that we're in. We ask this in Jesus' great name. Amen. Well, two experiences that we will all face, whether there's a pandemic going on or not, are fear and disappointment. Those are universal experiences. They were realities before COVID-19, and they will be realities when the pandemic is long over. Jesus Christ has an answer for our fear and for our disappointments. There are times when God allows things that we don't understand. There are times when God delays, and we don't know why. When that happens to you, I want you to remember that we can trust God always. Mary and Martha were sisters of Lazarus, and they were all friends of Jesus. And so when he got sick, it was natural that they would call to Jesus for help, and I'm sure they expected him to come quickly and raise Lazarus to health in the way that he had healed so many other people. And that is not how the story unfolded. When Jesus heard about his illness, he did not panic. He did not run to Bethany. He didn't even start walking. He said that Lazarus' illness would not end in death. And he said that all of this was happening for the glory of God. And then he stayed where he was for two days. So Jesus' response kind of throws us for a loop, especially when we look at verses 5 and 6. Look at what it says. Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. I want you to know that the Bible says that God is a personal God, a relational God who created us in his image so that we could have a relationship with him. 
God knows your name. He knows your circumstances. And he cares about you. And he listens to us when we call out to him. That's the truth of who God is. He's not just an impersonal force that we tap into like electricity. His mercy towards needy people, his friendship with the disciples like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus show us the heart of a personal relational God. But verse 6 says that he says he stayed where he was for two days. Jesus didn't panic. And Jesus didn't immediately reply to their request. Now this is the other side of knowing that God is a personal God. It means that God has a plan. God has purposes. God has motives that we may or may not always understand and see at the time. God wants us to trust him both in those times when we experience his goodness, but also in those times when fear and disappointment and disappointment are part of our experience. Through John's gospel, it's clear that Jesus is working on God's timeline. He's not being controlled by circumstances. He's not being dictated to either by his followers or the authorities who threaten him. What we see is that God has a schedule and every move that he makes is in alignment with God's plan. If you're a Jesus follower... You may experience times of fear. You may experience times of disappointment. There may be times when you're calling out to God for desperate, serious needs, and you just don't hear anything, and you don't see anything. It's in those times that I want you to remember today that Jesus does have an answer for our fear and for our disappointment. You are still loved by God. And this delay was no accident. It was part of God's plan. So today I want to take a look at three voices. The voice of Thomas, the voice of Martha, and the voice of Jesus. And we start with Thomas. I call Thomas the voice of faith and doom. He speaks up, he speaks to the rest of the group, and he says, Well, let's go with him and die. How's that for inspiring? Now you got to hand it to Thomas. He was a fully devoted follower of Jesus. He had heard Jesus' teaching. He had seen Jesus' miracles. He was fully committed even to the point of death. Thomas had taken seriously Jesus' words when he said, if anyone would follow him, let him take up his cross and deny himself. Well, Thomas believed that that was about to happen and he was fully prepared to follow Jesus to death because going back to Bethany would take them very close to Jerusalem where the authorities had already been plotting Jesus' death. As we read through the Gospel of John, Thomas's fears were not unrealistic. He knew that the authorities were capable of arresting Jesus and putting him to death. And in John's gospel, that threat has been out there since chapter 7. So Thomas has a faith that is still developing. He believes Jesus, he loves Jesus, he follows Jesus, but he can't really comprehend what Jesus has already said, that this death or the illness of Lazarus won't lead to death. And that this whole experience is going to glorify God somehow. I would say that Thomas, as he speaks doom and gloom, is a disciple whose faith is still maturing and growing. He's truly walking in discipleship with Jesus, but he's not yet ready for leadership because honestly, he has no hope. In Romans 5, the Apostle Paul says that we rejoice even in our suffering because we know that suffering leads to perseverance, perseverance leads to character, character leads to hope, and Paul, who is a leader, said, hope does not disappoint. As we meet Thomas in this chapter, he's fully devoted to Jesus, but his words still speak doom and gloom. He's got really very little positive to offer the people around him. If you are in a position of leadership in your family or workplace or home or community, I want to encourage you to measure your words in days like these. The question if you're a leader is not simply what do you feel inside, but what impact are your words going to have on the people who look to you? What Thomas had to share with others 
was doom and gloom, and that did not do himself or any of the people around him any good. Now, Jesus still brought him along. He wasn't done with him. But the day would come when Thomas would have a hope that would overcome his circumstances in a way that he wasn't experiencing in chapter 11. If you are overwhelmed with dread, know that God can handle it, but the people who look to you for leadership might not be able to. So take that real fear, those real worries, and bring them to God in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a hope and a wisdom to know what is the right thing to say to the people who are looking to you for leadership. Second, we come to Martha. And I call Martha the voice of faith and disappointment. She is understandably heartbroken when Jesus does arrive and she rushes out of the house to meet him, first alone, apart from the rest of the family. And her words really expose what's going on in her heart. She says, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now you see in those words that she's got really a full trust in Jesus. She knows what he's capable of. She believes that he still loves them and that he could have done anything. And her faith is not really diminished because she says to Jesus, even now I know that if you ask God, he will hear you. In essence saying, Jesus, I know you can do whatever you want, even in this circumstance. But we can imagine her emotions. Maybe she's speaking through tears, maybe with a trembling voice. It wouldn't be a big stretch of imagination to say that she might be angry, resentful, or even bitter. I mean, after all, when you think of it, Jesus has been healing literally hundreds of people. People came to him with every need imaginable. People who were crippled could walk. People who were blind could see. People who had fevers were um, cured. All of this was done free of charge, and all of this was done with an immediacy and a power and a, merge, and a mercy that just really shows us the heart of God. But it didn't happen that way for Martha and Mary and Lazarus. They sent word for help. Help didn't come. They were sure Jesus could heal their brother. Their brother's dead in a tomb. You can imagine how disappointed she must have been knowing that she loved Jesus, she trusted in Jesus, and Jesus did not do what she wanted. He delayed. If you are a follower of Jesus, there are going to be times when you struggle with the delays of God. These may be about matters that are very important. It could be that right now somebody in your family is unemployed and you're praying, Lord, they need a job soon. It could be that somebody in your family had health problems before all this pandemic started and you've been waiting and praying for them to experience strength and healing. It could be that you're looking at your savings account and wondering, how is God going to meet me in this point of need? And the question is, how will we respond if God delays if he doesn't operate on our timeline. When a follower of Jesus struggles with the delays of God, faith is the bridge between my timeline and God's timeline. When I struggle with the delays of God, faith is the bridge between what I know God can do and what God actually chooses to do. When I struggle with the delays of God, faith is the bridge between my request to God and God's answer. Please hear this. Jesus does have an answer for both our fears and for our disappointments. We come finally to Jesus, the voice of faith and life, and just look through this whole passage and see how Jesus handles the whole situation. No panic, no fear. He's not defensive, but look at what he says. Verse 4, this sickness will not end in death. This has happened for the glory of God, so the Son of God will receive glory from this. Verse 11, look at what he says. Lazarus is asleep, and I'm going to go wake him up. Verse 15, look at what Jesus says. I'm glad I was not there. Because of this, you are all going to really believe in me. Verse 23, he says to Martha, realize her brother is already dead. And Jesus says, your brother will rise again. 
And finally, the climactic passage of it all, verse 25. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Friends, that's really the great question of our message today. The same question that Jesus asked Martha is the question that we all need to answer this morning. Jesus claims that he is the answer to our fear and that he is the answer to our disappointments and even that he is the answer to death itself. That in Jesus, the I am God has arrived to give us his resurrection life that will last for all eternity. And the question for all of us is, do you believe him? When the Son of God steps into the story, even dead is not done. When the Son of God works in the, walks into the story, disappointments may disappear, not because the problem's done, but because his presence is so real to us. When God steps in, the light of God's grace and truth enters into our troubles, and there is a fellowship with God, a friendship with God that honestly is sometimes experienced most clearly in life's most difficult moments. You might say, well, that's an incredible Jesus, or that's an incredible statement that Jesus made, and you would be right. And we're right to ask, can he back it up? And to answer that question, you can either keep on reading in John 11 yourself or you can tune in next week. But I will let you know in advance, Jesus doesn't say anything that he can't back up. For today, I ask you the question that Jesus answer, asked of Martha. Uh, do you trust him? In everything that you're going through in life today, do you trust Jesus? Uh, some of you may have things that you really are afraid of. You may have concerns about your own health and well-being. You may be legitimately concerned for family members and friends. Maybe you're a person who works in health care and you're going to be around sick people every day. My question for each and every one of us is this. Will you take Jesus at his word? Do you believe him when he says that he is the answer that we're looking for? Jack Nicholson is one of the most famous actors in a generation. He's taken roles as wide as uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, to Batman, to A Few Good Men, and many other movies. In 2007, he co-starred with Morgan Freeman in a movie called The Bucket List. In that, there are two men who are terminally ill, and they decide to take a road trip to do all the things that they always said they were always going to do, before they kick the bucket. Well, during the time of filming that movie, Nicholson was interviewed by Parade Magazine, and he was taking some time to reflect on his own life and decisions that he had made through the years. Nicholson said, I used to live so freely. The mantra of my generation was, be your own man. I always said, hey, you can have whatever the rules you want. I'm going to have mine. I'll accept the guilt, I'll pay the check, I'll do the time. I chose my own way. That was my philosophical position well into my 50s. He says, but as I've gotten older, I've had to adjust. This is what Jack Nicholson said. We all want to go on forever, don't we? We fear the unknown. Everybody goes to that wall Yet nobody knows what's on the other side. That's why we fear death. Well, friends, today from the gospel, we've got the best news in the whole world. Jesus Christ has been to the other side of the wall and back. Jesus Christ can look at our fears and know that he is the answer. Jesus Christ can look at our disappointments and know that he is the answer. Jesus Christ can look even at our death and know with confidence that he is the answer that we need. And so the question for all of us 
is the same question that Martha faced. It's really why the whole Gospel of John was written. Do you trust Jesus Christ, that the Son of God has come for you to be your Lord and Savior, and that we can put our trust in him and experience the eternal life of God forever? To know that when we die, our body will be laid in the ground, but our spirit will be present with God immediately. To know that we will have a home in heaven for eternity. And then know, to know that in the here and now, right where we're living, we're not living alone, but God has given us the Holy Spirit to live in us and to be our life. If you've never said yes to faith in Jesus Christ, I'd invite you to do that right now. In a few moments, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. It's simply asking Jesus to forgive our sins and to acknowledging his leadership and lordship. And if you've never done that before, I can just urge you that it's the most important decision you could ever make. It's a free gift of God that's received purely by faith and trust in him. God already loves you. He already knows what you're going through. And he wants you to know you don't have to go through this alone. He cares about you and he wants to be your savior, your Lord, and your shepherd. If you'd like to pray with me while you're at home watching this, please join me now. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I've done wrong. I want to ask for your forgiveness over all my sin. Lord, I don't want to go through life alone, doing it my own way. I confess that you are Savior and Lord, and I want you to lead me. By faith, I want to be a follower of yours. Would you take me? Would you adopt me into God's family? And would you put your life through the Holy Spirit in me. I want to know the peace and the joy of your presence and experience your strength day by day. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Friends, you may have never trusted yourself to Jesus Christ before. And I want you to know that if any of you prayed that prayer with a sincere heart today for the first time, heaven is celebrating because God knew you would be here today and he has been waiting all your life for you to respond to him.